Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this applied NLP tutorial, we're going to learn how to fine tune a text generation model one. Second, how to push the text generated, like the fine tuned model into Hugging Face Model Hub. And in this process, we are also going to explore the stable diffusion part of it. So this is a combination of a lot of different things. I'm going to show you how the final outcome is going to look like. Then I'm going to get into the tutorial. First, this is the live model right now. The model is uploaded to Hugging Face Model Hub and the model I'm calling it SD Prompt Generator GPT Neo because this is a prompt generator for stable diffusion. So if you want to create something using stable diffusion, the AI art generator, so you ideally need to give a very detailed prompt. But for somebody who is a beginner, they may not entirely know how to give that prompt. So this tool or this model is ideally supposed to help them in generating new stable diffusion prompts based on the word that they give. For example, let me refresh the page. After I refresh the page, you can see that I've got an empty thing and I can give something here. Like for example, here I can say, um, uh, computer scientist working late in the night and I can say compute. Now when I say compute, it's going to fill in the details that will make your prompt look good or that will make your prompt more detailed for stable diffusion to create a really good image um, because prompt engineering this is going to help in prompt engineering. So this is ideally the final output. But the tutorial that we're going to see has nothing to do with stable diffusion except the application is on stable diffusion. So what we are trying to do ideally is, as you can see from the name, it says SD prompt generator GPT Neo. So we're going to use GPT Neo model to fine tune our prompts so that we have created a text generation model where we can give a prompt text and that will generate new prompt or a new extended prompt, better prompt for us. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a set of existing stable diffusion prompts and we have got a 124 M 124 million GPT Neo model and we are going to fine tune that model based on this data and then we are going to finally save that model and then push the model into Hugging Face Model Hub. The center I think we are going to do on um, Kaggle Notebook using Kaggle Notebook's GPU. So also I'm going to show you how to do this entire thing end to end starting from collecting data until uploading the model to Hugging Face Model Hub entire thing on one notebook. So ideally, if you want to replicate what I have done for a different data set, or even if you want to improve this and then use it for some other purpose, all you have to do is click the YouTube description, click the Kaggle notebook link and then fork it and then start running it by yourself. So let's get started with the tutorial. First, as simple as every time, create a new notebook um, if you're doing it from scratch. And once you create a new notebook, go to the settings and then select GPU accelerator. That will help you leverage Kaggle's GPU platform. And after you do that, then, you know, you would get the basic code. So the first line is NVIDIA SMI to check what kind of GPU, whether we have got GPU and what is the kind of GPU that we have got. After you do that, um, now I'm just giving credit to the data set. Uh, so this is kudos to Kriya AI for collecting this data set and making it open source as a CSV file. So we are using the prompt data set from Kriya AI repository. Please make sure that you start the repository and then give a shout out to the um, Kriya AI who actually collected the stable diffusion prompts. So in your case, if you're doing it for some other text, you need text data, whether it is a novel, whether it is a book, whether it is a bunch of tweets. Like for example, if you want to, <coughs> sorry, if you want to tweet like Elon Musk, if you want to tweet like Nawal, so whatever you want, you want text. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a bunch of raw text and then fine tune the model on top of it. So I have taken stable diffusion prompts from Kriya AI. After I do, I mean, after we, we have given the credit, next we are going to download the data using WGET. You can download the data using any step you want. I'm just using WGET, which is a bash command to download the CSV and store it in a C name called prompts.csv. And here I'm checking with LS to see whether the prompt.csv is available. It is available. Next, I'm using pandas to read my CSV file into a pandas data frame. In this case, the pandas data frame is called prompts. And I'm just running prompts to see what is my prompts content. Like I can, I can, um, I can do prompts.head and I can see what is in there. Or if I want to see one particular text, so I can do LOC and then see what is, what is the prompt. I can do this for all the prompts that I want and I can see what is in there. If I want full text, I can again like print the full text and I can see. 
The good thing about this particular data set is that you also get access to the image, which I'm currently not using it because it is not quite relevant for what we are doing now. But if you want, um, if you want to get into multi-model learning, then you can definitely use the image as well there. So now at this point, we know that we have got a data set, we have got prompts. So here I'm going to tweak something. What I'm trying to tweak is because I'm doing this as part of stable diffusion prompt generation, um, I want to make sure that my prompt is really detailed. So if you see my sample, you could see there are certain prompts that are just one or two word. I mean, this is something that anybody can create. So I don't want these kind of prompts in my training data set. So what I'm doing is I'm actually splitting this entire prompt based on space in a very similar like tokenizing, but a very naive way. And then finding out if the number of words are less than six, number of tokens are less than six, I'm then excluding them. So I basically I want prompts where the number of take number of words is greater than six. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm calling this data frame as prompts underscore GTA, GT6, which refers to greater than six. Now at this point, we're going to install a new library called uh, A8 Gen. This is from Minimaxer. Uh, who has done excellent contribution to the text generation and image generation domain uh, in terms of open source projects. So now we have taken this A8 exchange, which is going to make it really, really easy for us to do fine tuning of the GPT Neo model, or even you can do GPT-2 as well, but I'm currently doing a GPT Neo model. Then once we install the library, now we're going to specify what model we want to use. Uh, we are just specifying that from Eleuther AI, we want to use the GPT Neo 125 million parameter model you can use different models as well um the i think they've got a bigger 350 million parameter model you can use that as well or if you want any gpt2 model from hugging face model hub you can use that as well after after that we have to prepare the input data set um for this particular model which is ai text gen so the way we are going to do it is we're going to keep only the text column and we're going to store that as a .txt file because a text gen takes a dot txt file and then trains or like fine tunes the model. So I'm uh, removing the column and um, resetting the access and saving it as a file called input text cleaned and the column name, the column that I want to save is prompt and we are not going to have any header. We are not going to have index. And at this point, our training data set is ready for us to use within a text gen. So now we are going to call from a text gen token data set, import token data set and then take that into this. So the attribute or the parameter line by line means, do you want this entire document to be read as one text or do you want every line, individual line to be read separately? We have, in our case, we want every individual line to be read separately. So we're saying line by line is equal to true. And then we are reading the data set. And at this point from A8 exchange, import A8 exchange, we are going to import the model. So right now, as you can see, I'm importing the Eleuther AIs GPT Neo model, but you can see I've also experimented with the, um, the GPT-2 model, which you can call by TF underscore GPT-2 and call, say 124 million parameter model. So you can either do this or do this up to you. Um, like if you personally ask me, I think um, I found better results using the Eleuther AS model, um, GPT Neo model, but you can, you can experiment. I didn't do a lot of, lot of tuning. I didn't, I didn't try different sizes. Um, I was just excited to finish this and then, you know, I, I moved on. Once the model is downloaded, um, then you can start training in this case, the fine tuning process where you are calling the input data set. And then you're like, just like I said, line by line, do you want it to line by line? And whether you want to get the model from cash, number of steps that you want to do um, for every number of steps, for what number of steps you want it to display an output, you know, these kind of information. If you're doing it on Google Collab, what might be also in, in helpful to you is to save the model in Google Drive if you're doing it on Google Collab because the session is not persistent um, and learning rate, batch size, all these things. So while the model is being trained, you can also see that it you know generates new text. You can see how it does. Um, once the model has been trained completely, if you're going to use, if you're doing it on your local machine, you can do ai.save and that will save the model in um, the best model. But if you want um, it to be saved for a hugging face model hub, then you can use save for upload. Here you have to specify the model name that you want to be created, like the model name, which you're going to create in the hugging face model hub as well. So that's something you, for you to keep in mind. If you're doing it on local machine, do ai.save, that's completely fine. But 
like me if you want the model to be uploaded to hugging face model hub then give the model the name so the primary difference is when you say save it is going to by default save it in the current working directory all the files especially the pytorch model bin file and config.js file but if you say save for upload then it will create a folder and inside the folder it is going to save the they save the files actual files so this is the primary difference once you save the model you can specify the model folder from where the model has to be loaded and then that can be your new um, model like previously if you saw the model name was ai but right sorry ai um, right now you are calling that model or in inputting the model into a new object called prompt underscore ai which comes from the model that you just fine-tuned and saved it in your local folder or um, you know wherever you have saved it or google collab once you take this model, you can take this model and then say prompt um, prompt dot AI is prompt underscore AI is the object name here. And then you can say generate and you can give a prompt. Like in this case, if I give astronaut, you can see how it generates. You can see this or uh, if I say a photo of a car, then you can see how it generates badly damaged um wide angle and all this so you you can generate uh, different kinds of um, you can give different prompts and then you can uh, try to generate a um, few things if you just want a text like let's say you are going to create an api out of it like this function is something useful generate underscore one will give you a text which you can you know process it based on whatever you want at this point we have uh, loaded the training data set successfully downloaded the gpt neo model fine-tuned the gpt neo model for our data set saved the output model loaded the output newly trained model and created new text or text generation or prompt generation using the loaded model so we have done all these things now we are entering the last section of the video where we are going to find or learn how to upload this model to the hugging face model hub. now if you ask me why do you want me to upload the model to the hugging face model hub it's just if you want to contribute back to the community if you want everybody to use your model i think one of the easiest way right now available on the planet is to upload your model to hugging face model hub with proper license so what you have to do uh, you don't have to install anything specifically uh, from hugging face hub i mean yeah if you want to upgrade the hugging face hub you can do it but after you do that from hugging face hub import notebook notebook login and then when you call notebook login you will get this thing so this means you have to go to the hugging face model uh, your uh, profile go to the settings click tokens and here you can copy uh, you already have access token or you can create a new token copy the file here uh, the token come back here and then you can paste it and click login it would login it would save the token in your current directory and then it would lock you in and after you log you in then we are going to start the process at this point the authentication is successful then we are going to start the process of uploading the model to the model hub now there are a lot of different ways to upload the model to a model hub you can use git to do it um, if you have large files then you need git lfs you have different different ways uh, or you, even you can go to the the model hub interface in itself and then do it but the way i'm going to show you is to use the hugging face api to do it but before you do this thing, what you have to do is you have to go to your hugging face profile, go click new model, click your profile picture, click new model and give the same model name that you have mentioned here. And once you have the same, I mean, you can have different model name as well. Just make sure that you know the name. Once you have that, then come back here um, and then run these lines from hugging face hub, import HF API, API is equal to HF API and then you can call upload folder and inside upload folder you have to specify these four things first thing what is the current folder path your current folder path is this second what is the path in the repo which is the root file what is your repo id your repo id is what we just created the model and then finally what type of repo it is is it a data set is it a model just give model once you run this then finally you will get the link where if you click it, it will take you to the hugging face model hub and the model as well, like the entire details you can see here. Once you click this, like right now, I don't have the model card available. Um, uh, I can edit the model card and add the details here, like what kind of model it is, how did I fine tune it, where they can see the fine tuning code and all those things. But 
you also get access to the hugging phase hosted inference api because we pushed it through this now i can come here and then say um something like a computer mouse space and then type enter and then that would that would you know create some prompt for me like i can say uh, mona lisa's photo and i can click compute and you can you can get the information so um you can say an ast let me refresh it um and an astro not space and then it's going to create something so you can you can basically see how to do this thing right now this model is definitely not perfect as you can see with the result but the point here is not to make a perfect model but make something and then also make a video tutorial and also open source the code that so that you know all of you can create something of your own um something that is much more better than what i have created and then also contribute back to the community so to quickly summarize what we learned in this video we learned how to fine tune a text generation model using ai text gen and we did this entire thing in hugging face uh, sorry kaggle notebook we also did this using stable diffusion prompts thanks to um, kriya ai and we finally learned how to upload the model or how to create the model new model on hugging face model hub so that anybody can consume that model and then create their own text generation model so we have done an end to end tutorial of fine tuning a text generation model i hope this video tutorial was helpful to you like i said at the start all these essential links the model hub link the kaggle notebook link will be in the youtube description um you can like the video if you like it encourage your friends to subscribe to the channel but otherwise i'm always open for feedback and comments please let me know in the comment section i hope this was helpful to you see you in the next tutorial peace